President Akufuado has relaunched the Operation Calm Life with a call on both the military and the police to attach all seriousness and diligence in enforcing the law. The joint military and police strategy is aimed at curbing crimes during and after the yellow tide. Speaking at a short, a short while ago at a ceremony held in Accra, the president said the operation has become necessary following the high rate of armed robbery and attacks by land guards as well as vigilantism recorded in recent times. He charged the team to demonstrate professionalism in the discharge of their duties while respecting the rights of people. We still have security challenges to confront. We have not been able to uproot the menace of armed robbery, nor that of vigilantism. Activities of land guards still remain, despite the robust efforts Put, recently put up by the police in dealing with them. It is for this reason that I, like many Ghanaians, welcome the relaunch of Operation Calm Life, especially with additional logistical support being provided by the military, which will give further boost to the police in fighting crime. I wish to assure the Ghanaian people that their safety and security at all times are of the utmost concern and importance to government. However, government and the security agencies cannot undertake this crucial venture all by themselves. It will take a collaborative effort between the general public and security agencies to maintain law and order, and in accordance with the rule of law, deal with persons who break the law. It is a well-known fact that Operation Calm Life has been running for some years now, and indeed has been relaunched on many other occasions. This has largely been because of logistical and manpower constraints. My government intends to buck the trend. What we are witnessing today is a clear testimony to that commitment. President Ekufuado there. Now the Inspector General of Police, David Asante appeared to, for his part, is calling for more resources for the police. The reactivation of Operation Calm Life cannot be overemphasized. As you may be aware, Operation Calm Life was started in the year 2001 to confront some violent crimes which were mushrooming within Accra and its environs. Additionally, Operation Calm Life was to create the environment for citizens and residents to go about their normal economic activities without fear of crime or intimidation from any individual or groups. Operation Calm Life was launched to allow for a joint police military operations within Accra and Tema metropolis and later replicated in the regions. Following the launch, 12 snap checkpoints were opened at Agbogulushi, Obichebi Lamti Circle, Amanfro, Malam Junction, Spinktes, Ajirigano, Sakaman, Jowulu, Manet, Achimota, Amasaman, and Awudome, in addition to the night patrols that were conducted. Other tactical strategies were deployed, including extensive proactive policing options. The exercise has been erratic and at low key. You will agree with me that the level of enthusiasm with which the operation was started in 2001 IGP David Asante appeared to, well, another person who was there was the Defence Minister Dominic Nitiwo. For his part, he's calling for swift action by the judiciary in, in, in justice delivery. This initiative could not have come at a, very, a, better, at a better time. The major security challenges in Ghana include, but not limited to armed robbery and land guard activities. 
these have become prominent in many parts of the country, which your security services have and continue to deal with. The relevance of this program today will bring a lot of relief to Ghanaians across the length and breadth of this country. The perception, the perpetrators in the north and in upper west region would not be left out in this exercise. Crime commissions have become so sophisticated, especially with the usage of sophisticated weapons, including assault rifles, AK-47 guns, and very sophisticated pistols. While some criminals commit these crimes for economic gains, others do so and use the process to procure more sophisticated weapons. Mr. President, due to conflicts surrounding our dear nation, it is easy to procure arms across the borders. Though the security services have done everything and anything possible to ensure that small arms circulation is curtailed and minimized. This poses a serious threat to our nation and it's a time bomb if it's not kept. That is why I stated earlier, Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, that this retooling and relaunch of Operation Khan Life could not have come at a better time. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to plead with our judiciary to help in the swift prosecution of arrests that will be made by the patrol teams to boost the morale of our troops when they do go onto the field to work. We're still talking, well, that was the Defence Minister, Dominic Netiwo. We're still talking security. About 600 suspected criminals have been picked up in an early swoop by the Ashanti Regional Police. Four leaders of the recruitment venture in Kumasi have also been arrested. I've joined this business getting to four months now. Three, three months and two weeks. And so a few, like two, three days addition to that. So... I went to uh, one of my friends to get that opportunity and called me in Ivory Coast. So I went there and they introduced the business to me. When they introduced it to me, I realized that, oh, this is a place where I can make money. So I also decided to join him. And, How does it work? Um, it's a type of business, when you come to this business, it is like we are going making adverts. The business, it is network marketing. And this network marketing, it does also have a specific name called QNET. We don't hear their adverts on radio or TV stations. Their adverts are always run by human beings, from human being to human being. And before I joined the company, I never heard of anything like that until I joined the company. So if you are in the company, if you go and register, you have bought a product from the company like that. And that product can be cheap and dine. Cheap and dine is a medicinal product. It is like a, neck, uh, a chain. When you wear this product, it protects you against viruses like uh, when you are making calls for a long time and your phone got hot or heated. It has effects to the body. If you are wearing this, it protects you against all those things. And also, if like it is raining, lightning and thundering, it also has effects to the body. If you are wearing cheap and dine, it also protects you against all those things. It's not working one, only one person, it's the, the, the network needs uh, many people, people to be joining, people to be joining. That is why you see, so if I call and then I see that the, the work is good, then I also call my brother to come and join me. That is how the company is working. So that is how, how you see. How work? What do they sell? We sell products like cheap and down education, plenty of them. So that is how you see. So anyone that you, you, can, you want to buy, through this thing, you can go through the distance. They need to go to your school, and then that you find that they used to feel sickness. The leaders will bring that you find that you see it's a chain. Maybe if you are sick, they used to feel you. We went to Africa, we had the, the job at Africa, and we went there. So when we they we were plenty Ghanaians, we were not many, and, they, and then we told them that we also want our office in Ghana. Because we are many here, if something has happened over there, they will not, maybe that, that town areas, something has done there, and then we are newcomers, we are strangers, maybe they will, not, they will not be able to identify us. That is why we asked them that they should come and find some office here. So they came and then they found some office, 
at Tafu here. So they haven't set the office and then they say we should be coming group by group. Because we are many and then Ghana is our country, everybody wants to come. So they didn't settle to find the rooms and then everybody just come. Plenty. That's why we came to crowd here. It's not anything bad that we are here to do. Some of the persons picked up there explaining their way out. Well, they are believed to have been recruited by an agency called QNET for purposes beyond what they're saying yet unknown. Now, the four leaders who were arrested have been uh, transferred to the Jubilee Park in Kumase for further security screening. Away from that, let's stay in Kumasi a little longer. Well, the head of the addictive unit, actually, let's come back to Accra. Head of the addictive unit of the Kolibu Teaching Hospital, Mr. Logosu Amegashi, has warned against criminalizing or decriminalizing drug related offenses. Speaking to Joy News, Daniel Dazi, Joy News is Daniel Dazi in an interview. Dr. Amegashi says any attempt to legalize the use of narcotic substances in the country is likely to have negative impact and should impact negatively as well on the many efforts over the years. I am not a student of English, but I know that when you say you decriminalize something, it is no longer criminal. Therefore, it's synonymous to legalization. That is how I understand it. So if anybody is saying that decriminalization is creating the opportunity for people who are using cannabis to be given the option of treatment, I think there should be a better word. But in the first place, you are dealing with this in a policy-making level, at a policy-making level. Yes. At that level, how has this been defined? How has this been Over presented? Over the years, the possession and usage of these things in our statutory the laws was criminal. Mm -hmm. It wasn't put there by those people for no reason. It was for a reason. Some of which I have been talking over, over and over and over again because just like we will not allow you to commit suicide, we will not allow you to go sick or to go mad. Those were some of the reasons. There was a reason for those things. There were reasons for those things to be put there. Now, if for any reason we are believing that small smokers and these things, sending them to prisons or prosecuting them and sending them to prison is going to cut a chunk of their progressive life, their youthful life, then we need to have some debate, not an instantaneous thing like this. We need to look at the statistics. It will interest you to know that from the Ghana Prison Service, eh, as of October 24th, 2017, those people who are incarcerated in the Ghana prisons for drug-related crime is 808 out of 13,000 plus. That across the entire country? Across the entire country. That constitutes about 6.6%. Mm -hmm. So the argument that our cells are overflowing with drug-related cases are not true. Yes, even the 6.6%, the 888 is enough. But let's look at it. I don't believe that they are sent there basically just for possession and smoking. Mm -hmm. Some of them smoke and create or get involved in other things. We have instances where people have used and assaulted their own children. Mm. So we cannot, are we saying that if you smoke marijuana or use drugs, and then you have cut the fingers of your child for taking a piece of meat from this thing, we should leave you because you have smoked weed? You're still watching news today on Joy News and Stories Gone By. President Okufado has relaunched Operation Calm Life as a strategy in curbing the incidence of crime in the country. Also, about 600 suspected criminals have been picked up in a sweep in the Ashanti region. Still to come, we'll bring you the story of people of Kokosi in the Nandom district where queuing and arguing over the only functional borehole in the community has become a norm. That's our focus on our Let's Be Fair campaign this afternoon. So details uh, coming up shortly after this break.
Hey, welcome back. Many thanks for staying with us. On Joe News' Let's Be Fair campaign today, we put the spotlight on Kokosi in the Krachi in Chumuru district of the Volta region, where the only functional borehole in the community is breeding disunity. The over 1,000 residents jump queues, argue and fight over one borehole because their second borehole has been broken down. Uh, residents want government to attend to their water needs immediately. Jojo Kobna reports. Ten minutes drive from Chinderi, district capital of Krachi in Chimuru, in the Volta region. Tempests are rising. The argument here is because over 1,000 residents have access to just one borehole. What has compounded the problem is that the next community has a broken down borehole. Fetching water is usually an early morning and evening activity. It is almost midday. And yet many people are here anxiously waiting to fetch water. Residents fear the only borehole could break down because of heavy patronage. Sometimes pupils lose class contact hours waiting to fetch water. To get water, residents learn the virtue of patience. But after a while, their patience wanes. Sometimes residents take a nap while waiting for their turn to fetch water. The Krachi in Chimuru district office says about 25% of residents have no access to potable water. The district is surrounded by the Volta Lake, and what is needed is investment in treating and distributing potable water. You look at the communities and the number of our boreholes that, that uh, exist in these communities, you realize that it is woefully inadequate. And so we need to provide more. Now you take some communities and you go, the population is uh, over maybe 1,000, and you have maybe one functional borehole. And so you realize that in such a situation, uh, having access to water becomes a problem. And so when it happens that way, uh, it becomes a struggle among those uh, who go to fetch water from these uh, limited uh, boreholes. The district chief executive of Krachi in Chimuru, Augustin Kwesiapia, says although he is passionate about providing water to residents, borehole budget for next year is just 50,000 cities. One borehole is going to cost us 7,000, a mechanized one. Some even charge 10,000. So if we have uh, earmarked 50,000, so uh, 50,000 divided by 7, 7749. So we can only do 7 for 2018. Meanwhile, there are a lot of communities. We have a population of about 72,000 in Krachi and Chumuru. The easiest way would have been to draw from the lake to the communities. But that way, too, is very expensive. Just across the Volta River at Dambai are these thirsty children. In Ghana, diarrhea-related diseases account for 25% of mortality in children under five years. <laughs> If governments invest in provision of portable water, many needless deaths will be prevented. Jojo Kobner, Joy News.
your donations and support uh, are welcome. You can get to our front desk at Joy FM or here at Multi TV if you want to support uh, these groups of uh, people and the stories that we've told from them. Basically, we want to be fair. Let's be fair. And if the government won't, why don't you uh, put in your uh, widow's might? Away from that, Ghana is making multi-million dollar contributions to cultivation of onions in neighboring West African countries. That is according to the uh, uh, Ghana Agricultural Procedures uh, Producers and Traders Organization. The onions, mostly from Burkina, Faso, Niger, and Nigeria, the products uh, have flooded the Ghanaian markets while improved production is necessary. Ghana's ability to sustain production and to feed the entire population remains in doubt. NAVFM's Chrissy Debra explores the work of an artist in relation to sub-regional cooperation. My name is Farouk Arbo Jabri. My name is Mohamed Ghazali. And we have four types of onion. We have audio from Niger, we have audio from Burkina, and we have audio from Ghana, and we have audio from Agadas. In Niger, we have two types of onion. Niger, we have two types of onion. We have the we have the Galami, and we have the Agadas. And in Burkina, we have one type of onion, which is called the local the, the local name of that onion is called Kudugu. Everybody knows that we have Kudugu in Burkina. And we have our local onion here in Boku, and we have a local onion here in Kumasi, and the, and the surrounding areas of the southern south. The Niger onion is, 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 is bigger in sizes as compared to our local one here. And the Niger onion is also sweeter. A research conducted in 2010 and 2011 in two markets in Kumasi and Dakra suggests $120 million worth of onions were imported into the country. That means Ghanaians prefer locally grown onions to the imported ones. Like seriously? Hey, and I'm a boy. Though the figure is yet to be updated, it's believed it could increase many times. The impact of this is tons of onions are transported by road daily along the West African corridors to markets in Accra and Kumasi. Abiba Mohammed sells onions in a longer market. She would only stock the imported ones. They like the Niger ones. They say the Ghana one is hard on the eyes and time consuming. It was reported in 2012 the country loses $5 million annually from onion imported from Niger alone. There are therefore calls for Ghana to have more plantations to step local production in order to save foreign exchange. Despite the problems, Jabril and Ghazali believes it's impossible to depend on our onions. The certain type, we normally plant it around June, July, that's the rainy season in the southern, in the, in the, in the, in the southern area. We planted at that time, but now it has finished. So we now live with the local ones. The local ones will start from December, January, up to February. The local ones also start. That's the season we also used to plant this in, uh, harvest that this in the local one into the country. An artist is therefore extending the argument by collecting Charlie from major markets in the country. Charlie is an interwoven basket used to cover the top of the sack containing farm produce before it is transported. Inspired by the design and labor of the designers of the Charlie, she believes Ghana and her neighbors should find ways of cushioning each other's economy. So the idea of um, weaving goes beyond just the objects, then weaving of spaces, weaving of countries, transportation, thoughts, narratives, what actually strikes them to do such an object. Bringing them to my space, metaphorically bring their presence because the object is present in my space. That peaceful interdependence and coexistence will see to the sub-region's growth. My name is Teresa Ankoma, and this installation is my work titled Crafting Craft Identities. Reporting for Joy News, Kwesi Debra. All right, let's get to talk about Christmas. Now, some travelers caught up by Joy News, uh, uh, caught up, uh, 
that we caught up with at the Circle New Plum Bus Terminal here in Accra are anxious to celebrate Christmas in their hometowns with their families. My colleague Hanno Dami has been interacting with some of them who are so excited or seem so about their trips. At this time of the year, it is expected that many who traveled from other parts of the regions to the capital will return home to spend some time with family. That causes the bars at bus terminals that we find, especially in the capital, Accra. I have with me Kwesi, who is a bookman here at New Plan Station, to tell us how business has been so far. I'm sure you are having a good day. Ah, uh, sweetie, I'm having a very good day. This year is a fantastic year. Thanks to everything that God has done for us. How many cars have you loaded today as a bookman compared to last year? How many cars would you For have now, loaded? I don't know the time now, if somebody can tell me the time. It's around 10 a.m.? Hey, around 10 a.m. This is our fourth car. Okay. Previously, 10 o'clock, you can load four cars at the same time. I'm sure you are expecting to load a lot more. By 24 hours, for my side call, Protwa, we will be, we'll be getting to a head of nine, nine, eight cars. And at so as a bookman, all you keep doing is shouting Kumasi, 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 Kumasi. It is, it is a fantastic job for you to shout Kumasi, Kumasi. And also, the bookman is like a human resource work. You deal with human beings. Talk to somebody to come and take your bus. So because we have VIP here, we have Chinese VIP there, and we have other companies behind us. So when a passenger comes here and you talk to him or her anyhow you like, he will not come to you again. You get like, and speak to some of the uh, passengers and find out how and why, whether what Kwesi Debra told us is indeed true, that they, get, they got money to travel this year as a result of a new government. You start off with the driver, please. What's your name? My name is Go Kojo Sechi. Kojo, Kojo, Kojo Sechi. Is it your first ride for today? No. And are you, are you adhering to all the safety rules put out by the MTTD? Why? Well, uh, everything is normal for us. You don't drink, you don't to drive. You make sure when you are tired, you rest. Yes. If you're tired, then you rest. Before maybe it's, uh, if you, uh, you, if you, uh, you are driving this road, maybe if you can, you, you have to rest small and before you go back. Oh wow, I see a beautiful family here. Hello, good morning. Welcome to join us. What's your name, madam? I'm Doka Sose. Doka Sose. Odeyopo. Is it for the Christmas holidays or it's a daily routine? For the Christmas holidays. And what are the names of these beautiful children? Those princes and princess. Prince and princess. Is it the first, their first time going to Kumasi? Yeah, for this, it's first time, and then this is um, um, her second time. And it's just a few days to Christmas. People are going to celebrate with their families. What are you doing? Well, whatever it is you're doing, just be careful and be cautious. All right, so I'm going to take a very quick break for uh, business. George Abwajirafe is standing by. Please stay.